What's up YouTube, Russ here, welcome to The Trail Hunter and today I'm going to be giving you um, all of my thoughts and a quick overview of the Z-Pax Nero and the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 2400 Windrider Backpack. I'll be talking about all the pros and the cons and the similarities and differences between the two packs as well as um, all of the uh, formalities around uh, getting these things shipped all the way from the US over to the UK. They're both really good packs for very different reasons but which one am I going to be taking on my round the world trip? Stay tuned. For those of you who are new to my channel, I believe that the best way to explore the world is on foot. I'm offering you hiking video guides, gear reviews, gear lists, travel tips, hiking tips and much much more. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, so here we have the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 2400 Wind Rider and the Z-Pax Nero Backpacks. Both HMG and Z-Pax are US based companies, so um, I had to spend a little bit more money to get these packs sent over here. I had to wait a little bit longer because Z-Packs make all of their products to order, whereas HMG uh, actually managed to uh, send me one of these which they had in stock already. As I said, it cost me a wee bit more than usual, but um, I believe that it's definitely worth every penny. Both companies specialize in making ultralight, ultra strong backpacking gear, all the way from tents to bivvies to backpacks to tarps. Um, and tons of accessories. They're both very small companies um, compared to your Patagonias and Ospreys and fill a very niche gap in the outdoor market which is aimed at long distance hiking. When I was looking for backpacks, I was looking for a pack that was lightweight, strong, durable, simple design, um, and designed for long distance hiking. I was looking for a pack which would fit a uh, minimal amount of stuff and would fit in the overhead storage of airplanes. So my main aim was to get a pack which would be about a seven kilo base weight, which is about 15 pounds. After watching a ton of YouTube videos, um, I found out that the US based companies really know how to make their hiking gear and they've got something really cool going on. So I decided to order both of these packs just so that I could test each one out. One's a bit smaller, one's a bit bigger, one's stronger, one's lighter, one's more heavy. Um, but I really wanted to get a good feel of these packs because I thought in the ballpark I'd be really happy with either of them but I really wanted to be sure and um, actually have a good old test run of both of these backpacks. It's also important to note that I wanted to test these packs to see which one was most suitable for long term travel as well as long distance hiking so which one would best fulfill both of my needs for each of those things. Okay so the most uh, obvious thing to start with will be the specs. I'll compare both of the two side by side and um, give you guys exact specifications of the packs. And uh, yeah, let's just crack on with it. Uh, first off, let's talk about size. The interior volume of the HMG Wind Rider is 40 litres plus another 9 litres of the side pockets and the hip belt pockets. Whereas the Z-Pax Nero's main compartment is only 25 litres with uh, your side pockets um, and your main uh, front mesh pocket, it comes to 38 litres. So I kind of thought maybe I wouldn't need all of the room that the HMG Wind Rider was offering, although um, because I've got both of these, I could easily downsize to the Nero or upgrade to the Wind Rider. What I found is that the HMG Wind Rider actually had just enough room um, for all of my main gear, plus a little bit of extra room for something else. Um, the fact that it's got the roll down top, which I'll talk about in more detail later, allows you to really expand both of these packs. Um, so it's a little bit more versatile in that respect. But it wasn't too big and bulky so that it wouldn't fit in the overhead storage compartment of a plane and it wouldn't look too conspicuous on my back as well. It's just, it's, it's still quite a small backpack. The Nero, on the other hand, was literally just such a tight squeeze. Um, it does fit all of my gear in it, although it's um, a little bit too little space for me. Although the good side of this would be that it would keep my pack really minimal. It would stop me bringing extra stuff. It would stop me packing out things like souvenirs. So. As a minimalist, uh, having a small pack will actually stop you bringing so much stuff. But I really like the flexibility of the HMG. It's really important to note here as well that I'm planning on getting on these planes with nothing in the outside compartments of the backpack. Everything must fit inside the main compartment of the pack. So I'm not going to have snacks and things and a uh, or a walking stick hanging out of one of the side pockets. Everything must fit 
inside the main compartment. I didn't feel that the Z-Pax Nero would actually enable me to do that, but I'm very confident that the HMG Windrider will. However, when I'm um, at my destination, uh, I'll actually be packing up my bag with things that I'll be taking hiking, like food and extra layers and things like that. So I'll have a minimal amount of stuff for when I get on the plane, and when I arrive in the country, uh, of my destination, I'll then be packing out with other things. So again, the Wind Rider is much better for that as well. Moving on, let's talk about materials. So both of these backpacks are made out of Dyneema, which is also known as Cuban fiber in the hiking community. Dyneema is an ultra strong, ultra light, waterproof synthetic material, um, which is mainly used for making sailing boats sails out of, for uh, making fishing nets out of, and they also use it for various things in the military as well. But in recent years, um, backpacking companies out of the US have been using this material to make all of their outdoor gear with. Um, both of these backpacks are made out of Cuban fiber, but very um, different weights of Cuban fiber, different thicknesses of the material. So um, it really matters when you're thinking about the weight of the backpack, the strength of the material, um, and both of these are really important things to consider when thinking about long-term travel plus hiking. Okay, let's talk about the weight of these backpacks. The HMG weighs in at 2.2 pounds, which is 916 grams, using a thickness of uh, Cuban fiber called DCH150 at 170 grams per square meter in black, or you can get it in white at 1.87 pounds, which is 851 grams, using a thickness of DCH50 at 120 grams per square meter. Uh, because I got this backpack in black, they've actually added about three ounces to the backpack's weight in total. Uh, this is because they add a coating to the Cuban fiber and also use a slightly thicker uh, weight of the Cuban fiber as well. Because it's a thicker fabric it actually makes the pack more durable I think and also it feels really really strong and that it's going to hold up to a lot of um, uh, long distance hiking and loads of different um, weather conditions as well. It's completely different from a ripstop nylon, which is what most of these mainstream backpacks are made out of. Um, that's like a woven nylon, whereas Cuban fiber feels more like a really thick um, rubbish compactor bag or something that's really industrial feeling. Looking now at the Z-Pax Nero, it only weighs in a measly 10.9 ounces, which is absolutely nothing. It's so light, this backpack. 10.9 ounces is the equivalent to 309 grams, which is 98 grams per square meter, which is literally a third of the weight and almost half the thickness of the HMG 2400. So if you're really counting those grams, then the Z-Pax Nero might be way more up your street. Although I do believe that the thickness of the fabric will definitely hinder the durability of the pack. That said, I've given this backpack almost as much of a testing as um, the HMG 2400 and it still held up really well, but it definitely feels a lot more flimsy and uh, a lot more, it actually feels a lot cheaper than this fabric. That said, the Z-Pax Nero definitely is a strong backpack, it actually feels quite wrong to be uh, holding a backpack this light um, in your hands um, that's supposed to be taking you on a through hike of over two and a half thousand miles. You wouldn't believe it, but some people actually hike the entire PCT, the CDT or the AT out in America wearing just this backpack, it's really small. Okay, let's cut to the chase and talk about pricing and shipping for both of these backpacks. The HMG 2400 Wind Rider will set you back at about 310 US dollars, which is 238 pounds 50. Sorry, 236 pounds 50. The Nero, on the other hand, costs 199 dollars, which is 151 pounds 82. Bearing in mind though that ordering both of these packs from the US will set you back a little bit extra because you're going to be char charged for both your taxes on the other end when it arrives in the UK because you don't pay the tax on these when you pay them on the website as well as your courier charges, your custom charges and anything else that you wanted extra. Um, so anyway, let's look at those now. Uh, I've written these down. So uh, for the HMG Windrider, you'll pay $310 plus a $60 charge to ship, and also there's a charge for another $17 as you need to pay the tax when it reaches the UK. So the pennies do rack up. Um, for some reason, both of my packs got held in customs um, for checks, which for the HMG cost me about 40 pounds, which is, is actually pretty mental. Uh, looking at the Nero now, you will pay uh, $199 plus $24 in shipping, and then 109 
sorry, $10.95 for tax and then a £40 customs charge when it's arrived in the UK as well. So in total you'll pay somewhere in the region of uh, $335 for the HMG Windrider and $218 for the Nero in total. This sounds like a lot of money for both of these packs but trust me it's worth it. Um, I've read up on these backpacks quite a lot and I've read about a lot of people hiking all the way through the PCT with either of these packs so they're built to last. Uh, one more important thing to note as well is that Z-Packs don't stockpile their gear, they actually make all of their packs and their tents to order. So um, I waited about four weeks for the Z-Packs Nero to arrive at my door. Uh, but as HMG stockpile their gear then they shipped it the very same day after I ordered it and it was actually at my door within two weeks so a lot quicker than Z-Packs. One thing I would say, um, which is a piece of advice that Parcel Force gave me, is don't pay for the express delivery um, the end of HMG and Z Packs on their websites. Uh, they won't get here any faster, they'll only get held in customs when they arrive anyway, and you'll have spent a few quid more uh, for express delivery and it would have got here at the exact same amount of time. Uh, it's exactly what I did, I spent probably about an extra 20 quid uh, in express delivery and yeah. Uh, but you learn the hard way. Okay, so now we've gone over some of the specs and shipping. Let's talk about some of the features of both of these backpacks. Uh, both of these backpacks come with a ginormous mesh front pocket, which is perfect for stuffing things like your hat, your glasses, some snacks, uh, your maps and things like that in there. Um, it's one of the big key factors that I was looking for when purchasing a backpack from the US. The mesh on the HMG is really thick and feels really strong. Um, it feels like it's going to put up with a really good long um, through hike whereas the mesh on the Z-Pax Nero it's a lot softer it still feels really strong but it's not it doesn't feel as durable it definitely feels like it's made out of a much lighter material. Hyperlight Mountain Gear do have a uh, another model of the 2400 which is called the Southwest the only main difference is that the front and side pockets are made out of a uh, completely closed material so it's almost like another um, section of Dyneema which is sewn onto the main body of the backpack whereas this one um, I really like the mesh instead of the completely enclosed front pockets because I get to see exactly what I'm reaching for I feel like it would drain a lot more easily I think in the southwest they do come with draining holes at the bottom I think even this one does because it's got this kind of seam at the bottom but I just really like having a mesh so I can see what I'm diving in there for. Both of these backpacks come with what I think is the best feature of both of them, which is the roll down top. Um, it's really handy for if you want to expand the um, size of your backpack, you can kind of have it up here or down here. It rolls down over the top and cinches on either side with these plastic side release buckle clips. Um, it also makes the packs really waterproof and stops dust and things like that getting inside the backpacks as well. The way of which you fasten these packs down however is also quite different. Um, the HMG 2400 Windrider comes with like this strap that's on the front and then that kind of goes over the top of the pack and then you fasten it with this buckle clip here and then you pull the cord and then what that does is that packs down all of the weight of the backpack to the back of the torso and to your shoulders so it makes the pack a lot more sturdy when it's on you whereas the Z-Pax Nero doesn't have that all it has to kind of cinch down the weight of the pack is these side kind of straps here and while that's good I find them a little bit flimsy and you can't really grab them very easily they they float around a little bit I have to put them in the side pockets um, and it doesn't really pack down the weight of the bag I guess the um, the maximum load that this backpack is a lot less than the maximum load of the HMG Windrider so you're not really going to need to pack down all that weight using this kind of strap here but I really like that the HMG 2400 Windrider has this because it just makes the pack more secure and you can also put things like your tent or your sleeping mat in the top of the backpack roll it over the top and then strap it down really tight to the backpack and it's not going to go anywhere so it also adds a little bit more storage with the HMG um, but the Z-Pax Nero because it's such a lightweight backpack I don't think you're going to need that for practicality um, if you're carrying a minimal amount of stuff you're probably only going to be having like a really um, tiny really thin sleeping pad or none at all if any I think the Z-Pax Nero is definitely for more of a really ultra light um, gram counting um, through hiker whereas the 2400 I think just by these few features that I've mentioned 
is definitely more of a uh, through hiker who wants to carry a few extra bits and bobs. Uh, another thing about how these packs fasten, and one thing that I really like about the Nero over the HMG 2400 is that it's actually got these two uh, little tabs, if I unroll it here, it's got these two little tabs here which guide you to where the centre of the Velcro strip is into, in the top lid of the backpack so that when you're uh, opening and closing you can just very simply close it like this seal it down or when you need to open it just grab those two tabs and then it's open it's a lot more simple whereas if I open the HMG 2400 it doesn't have one of those tabs I mean it's pretty simple to close but without the tabs you end up kind of picking somewhere a bit different then what I have to do is kind of pull the velcro apart like this each side of the lid apart so that you get a nice even kind of crease there and then start kind of um, sealing down the velcro on the side of the pack so I definitely really wish that the HMG had these kind of tabs here and just really help with opening and fastening the back. Uh, both designs are really easy for you to reach and access so if you've got a bottle of water in there like these have it's really easy to just reach around while you're walking and get your, uh, get your snacks out of these side pockets although I do uh, much prefer the mesh pockets of the Windrider just because I can see what I'm grabbing if the back if the backpacks on the floor um, and also it's probably better for drainage and keeping things dry that are in there okay let's talk about uh, shoulder straps the HMG comes with a fairly wide shoulder strap with a Jay-Z chain so you can attach things to it whereas the Nero has a seriously wide set of shoulder straps with a really long daisy chain all the way down there. I really love these ultra wide um, shoulder straps, they really distribute the weight of the backpack on your shoulders really nice and evenly and it really helps just because the uh, Nero doesn't come with a frame, um, it's completely frameless and the hip belt on it is just there for stability so having these wider shoulder straps is definitely a plus for me. Although that said the HMG's um, shoulder straps are still really comfortable, they're nicely padded um, but yeah just the wider ones on the Z-Pax Nero were really really nice. Okay so that brings me on to the next topic which is hip belts. The Z-Pax Nero is completely frameless um, but it has got a hip belt but all the hip belt is is just this really thin, um, flimsy piece of strap and all that's there for is to buckle it to yourself and fasten the pack to your body a lot more. Because this doesn't have a frame or anything inside it, um, the weight isn't going to be distributed to this hip belt and that's why it doesn't need to be a really thick, kind of robust hip belt. All it needs to be is just this strap just to kind of fasten it a little bit better to your body. But because this backpack is designed to be carrying very minimal amount of stuff, you wouldn't really need a hip belt um, that's going to distribute the weight to your hips anyway. Uh, the HMG on the other hand has a really huge wide thick um, hip belt. The hip belt also comes with some hip belt pockets as well which are um, taped at the seams and along the zips so that they're a lot more water resistant. Um, I did actually um, hike uh, the southwest coast path uh, the other day well it was absolutely chucking it down with rain and water does get inside these quite easily and I found that a little pool of water was at the bottom of the hip belt pockets on the HMG so if you're keeping like a camera like I have my Sony RX100 in there it is expect it to get wet and I wouldn't advise carrying your electronics in these if it's really pouring down with rain. It's all right if it's dry and you can fit an iPhone 8 Plus in these, it's big enough for that. But if it's raining, don't rely on your hip belt pockets to keep your um, camera or your gadgets um, completely dry because they will get wet in those hip belt pockets. Uh, but yeah, with the Z-Pax Nero, it's just a bit of a shame that um, the hip belt isn't completely kitted out with some hip belt pockets as the HMG is, but it's definitely a weight saver on this backpack. I have very briefly uh, touched on the topic of frames, so um, let's go into that in a little bit more detail. Uh, the Z-Pax Nero is a completely frameless backpack, meaning that inside the backpack there is no rod, there's no wire going all the way around the edge. It is completely frameless. There is no um, components in there that will add stability or strength. You can actually get this entire backpack and squidge it and move it around. It's it's almost like a, uh, a plastic bag with some straps on it. That's basically all this is. Um, this backpack actually does come with a, um, a back pad, which I believe is just to help with sweat and chafing when you're on the trail. Um, it also doubles up as a really cool kind of sitting pad, so you can just take this out 
sit on it if something's wet, but it doesn't really add any strength to the backpack. It doesn't add um, much weight either, which is which is a plus size. Um, but I did find that it's quite uncomfortable if I un unclip this. You can see on the back that it's kind of fastened down with these little cords. And I found that really uncomfortable and itchy when I was wearing it on a really hot day. Um, so yeah, no frame, just this little pad, the Z-Packs um, Nero. It does uh, really conserve on the weight though. The HMG on the other hand does have kind of two aluminium rods, which if I kind of go in here um, and un velcro these little bits, I can actually take these rods out. I won't take it all the way because it might be a bit of a pain to get back in, but this isn't a frame, this is just two rods so that they can kind of keep the back of the backpack really straight and distribute the weight to the hip belt. So I actually really liked having these in there. It wasn't a frame as such, so it doesn't add too much weight and it's really inconspicuous, but um, yeah, I really like the fact that the HMG has just a little bit of extra stability so that if you're carrying some heavier loads, um, it doesn't matter too much. Um, you won't need to worry about whether the pack's going to break or whether it's going to be comfortable. If you pack this backpack right, it's a lot easier to kind of get a really comfortable fit as well. Uh, on my 100 mile hike of the South Downs Way using the uh, 2400 Wind Rider, um, I did find that having the hip belt uh, with the aluminium rods, because um, it was distributing the weight to my hips, it made the pack feel so much lighter. Whereas with the Nero, because it actually hasn't got a frame, um, even though you're going to be carrying less weight than one than what you would have in the um, Wind Rider, you would end up with um, a pack that feels a lot heavier on the shoulders. So yeah, I prefer wearing a hip belt um, for these long distance hikes. Both of these backpacks come with a sternum strap on each of the um, main shoulder straps. Um, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 2400 also comes with a little emergency whistle so that you can easily be found if you get stuck somewhere. Let's talk about hydration. The Z-Pax Nero doesn't come with any hydration pockets at all. However, the HMG 2400 comes with, between the two aluminium rods, there's a space with a pocket so that you can put a platypus in there and then you can get the water line and stick it through this little velcro fastened hole in the side and then bring it over your shoulder so that you can uh, have a drink on the go. That said, I'm not a big fan of platypuses. They're hard to clean, they break easily, they weigh more than your average water bottle. Um, I prefer to just have two water bottles either side or four depending on um, how much water's in the area and um, just have them in the side pocket so I can just re reach them easily. Overall, the HMG 2400 Wind Rider is definitely the uh, perfect pack for me. It's just the right size, enabling me to carry just what I need, plus a few extra things, while also limiting me to what I can take, so keeping my pack really minimal. I really love the uh, huge hip belt pockets. Um, it's great for fitting all of my bits and bobs, like my phone and my cameras and things like that in. Um, it's just got everything that I need and every aspect and piece of design about this backpack has been well considered for three hikers. The, uh, the Nero on the other hand is still a really good backpack and I would definitely recommend both of these packs. What I really love about the Z-Packs Nero is that they've still managed to cram so many cool features into this little tiny backpack um, and not really um, compromising on the weight as well. It's such a light and durable pack. So yeah, if you're looking at counting those grams, the Z-Pax Nero is the backpack for you. If you're looking to take a little bit extra and want a more durable backpack uh, that's got a few more bells and whistles, then definitely go for the HMG 2400. But yeah, for me, I'm still finding my feet with um, hiking long distances. Um, it's not like I've hiked thousands and thousands of miles before. I'm still practicing and figuring out what works best for me. And um, for me, a more robust, um, more waterproof, stronger backpack with a few more um, pockets and literally bells and whistles um, with some added comfort and a little bit of extra space so that I can take a few extra things with me. Uh, made the HMG 2400 the perfect pack for me. The HMG 2400 is a little bit pricier for £118 more than the Z-Packs Nero, but for me it's definitely worth every single penny. Lastly, if I were to take any um, of the features of the Z-Packs Nero and put them into the HMG 2400, it would definitely have to be those little tabs that go on the Velcro strip. Uh, so it just makes it that little bit easier for fastening down the lid. Uh, when you've rolled it down. It just makes everything feel a little bit more secure when you've fastened it as well. So yeah, those little tabs, really good plus on the Nero. 
please HMG put those on your backpacks as well. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching my side-by-side -side comparison of the Z-Pax Nero and the HMG 2400 Windrider backpacks. I'm really going to rack up the miles with the HMG 2400 and I'll get back to you guys with a more in-depth review of this backpack once um, I've put it through even more of its paces. Okay guys, this is the end of this side-by-side -side comparison. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to head over to my website which is thetrailhunter.com for full written reviews of these packs once I've written them. Uh, they should be there already. If not, they will definitely be coming soon. Okay guys, if you found this video at all useful, then hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.